Hello everyone. Hope you're all doing well today. Just wanted to cover a few things before I actually start. First off, I'm sorry if you can hear background noise. I have my window and fan on because I do not want my laptop to overheat. Second, yeah, the uh, one I was trying to do last week, I think. Actually, yeah, I'm pretty sure last week was uh, cut short because my laptop overheated because I couldn't have my wind or didn't leave my window open. My fan was not enough. My cooling pad was not enough. So hopefully now the uh, laptop doesn't laptop doesn't overheat and there's not much background noise. Uh, and the third thing is I because I've been uh, pretty behind the ball with replay review the past little bit. There are some replays that did not get downloaded. Uh, I don't remember exactly which ones. Cinex ND's Ember Spirit game, Death 04's Death Prophet game, No Steel's Morphling game, Becky's Mars game, and V Coder's Lena game. All those games I could not get to because I'm dumb and didn't download them. I didn't even think about downloading them, even though I know that there's a one week cap on uh, replays that aren't ticketed. So sorry about that everyone. We can uh, obviously feel free to send in another replay whenever and I will try my best to get to them. So for now we will look at Kurt Cam- wait no. Death Noises AM game, this one I have pulled up. So comments on this one, they were Lost this game, wonder about my farming patterns. Alright, basic stuff. First off, 476 GPM is very low on anti-mage. Like, very, very low. But, you did lose. So I'm gonna assume it's because you didn't have much of the map to farm. I'm gonna... Oh, yep, just what I thought. Yep. Yep. Kind of okay, but 200 GPM is very bad. Okay, so this is what I thought. You had... I forget who it was. I think it was Y God. Who's for any of the DFCers in here? The rank 200 carry player says that he refuses to play anti mage because uh, in or refuses to play anti mage in sub 7k games because any bracket sub 7k he does not believe anti mage is winnable because your supports and your team can't make the space needed for AM. So you're gonna pick AM in a sub like. 4k bracket where people have this mindset of uh oh great we still have the fucking flying bug and he has an orb of venom on lion off to a great start we can see but uh what was i saying but yeah so like you're gonna have to learn if you're gonna keep playing am on how to make your own space and how to come back from behind and solo carry a game because uh this hero does not function very well from behind and this hero also doesn't function well when you have people on your team taking farm like, actually, I'll quickly pause and take a look at when you picked AM. First off, this isn't a good anti mage game. I'm gonna guess you picked a 10th to counter the Wraith King? Yep, thought so. Okay. Uh, rule of thumb for pubs, especially lower ranked pubs. It's always gonna be support, support, first two picks. Off laner, third pick. Mid and safe laner, fourth, fifth pick. They flip. If I see Wraith King getting picked in the third phase, I'm going to assume it's an offlane Wraith King. And even if it was a carry Wraith King, it's not that good against, or AM's not that good against Wraith King anymore. Now that the level 20 talent is a reincarnation no mana cost, Wraith King's just going to get a Radiance and just force down all your towers, and he'll just take all your buildings because he can fight at like level 12, while AM requires like level 18 and 3 items, 4 items, because by the time he gets those 3, 4 items, he'll be at level 18. Am doesn't have like a level requirement, but uh, he has a farm requirement, which is way harder to get on a hero who doesn't farm super, super fast until he has this Battle Fury, which I'm going to assume he has at like 20 minutes. Damn, 2010. That's good. But yeah, so like, that's 20 minutes of Wraith King taking over this game that you can't really do much. So you said farm patterns. I'm gonna go to the laning phase, see how you farm. Already one last hit in the first wave. It's kind of bad, but you know it happens. Yeah, this is the issue with the uh, AM pick. Although your hero does well against dual melee off lanes, 
it's still a Wraith King who has like 64 base, 62 base with Vampiric Aura, yeah, close enough. So that guy hits hard, and you don't have, our oh, never blink aggressive there. On AM in the early game, it's never blink aggressive, only farm. Like, unless you know for a fact you can pressure them in some way, or get a kill, never blink aggressive. Because Wraith King can trade hits with you, he has lifesteal. You just try hooking a courier? No, what the fuck, it's walking courier. What was that hook? Oh well. But yeah, never blink aggressive like this. You're gonna take damage, although you may do damage back to Wraith King, he will out sustain you. And camera work. Look at the Pudge. Pudge is your only threat, not the creeps. And because you blinked in aggressively, you died. Anyways, go further into the game. Who are you farm? Lost your tier 1 tower is gonna happen against an offlane Wraith King with a the safe laner and your entire team is no D push. Uh, I just put in the game kick your line on a lane. He needs to go bottom. But we, uh, but I say a bit. The more heroes you bring top, the more heroes they bring top. Because your your mid and your supports have come top, and you, yeah, you're dead. Have you actually counter spelled you would have lived? Oh, you did live. Cool. Yeah. So like your your team is bringing heroes top, although you guys won that fight three for nothing. It's still, you almost died. Like, you got pretty lucky SF didn't swap targets onto you. Because if he did, you're just dead. And then that engagement goes from amazing for your team to pretty shit. Because your team can't deal with a late game Phantom Lancer. Besides the anti-mage. Or a late game Shadow Fiend can kind of just blow up snipers and your sniper doesn't have a brain. If you pick snipers, who doesn't? Uh, another thing, as I mentioned before, the last anti mage replay, don't buy Perseverance, buy the Mithril Hammer and Broadsword, helps you farm faster. Perseverance no longer gives 10 damage, it's not worth the, vo the Void Stone. Especially when you have, like, you have double Clarity, double Mango, because you have a Mango Tree on your left here. You may as well utilize those Clarities and Mangoes. You just waste it, like, right now you could have 1,050 gold instead of 950, which is 100 GPM quicker. 100 GPM quicker, 100 gold quicker. And right now, just TP top. Because there's heroes bottom lane, you don't want to be bottom. Your DK looks like he's going to be pressuring his tier 1. Not his entire team is mid for whatever reason. There's no reason to be here. At this point, just ignore this these jungle camps. Go ahead and push out that mid lane. Or mid lane. Top lane. My god. I'm in trouble talking. But yeah, just get the lane. So every single time that there's something happening on the map where you know exactly where all five of the enemies are, push out a lane. Don't go to the jungle. Nice item am. This guy knows he has a fucking boots force staff going to Hurricane Pike, right? This force staff purchase is kind of okay. And it's 20 minutes in. It's like you didn't even, you didn't even win your lane. Your items are actually totally fine. The race almost like 300 off of Battle Fury treads. That's totally fine at this point. That's delusional. Just looking to blame his team for his inability to play. Yeah, you can push out one more wave if you want, but it's pretty risky with all their heroes off the map. And at this point, TP bottom. You can reliably assume, because uh, Shadow Fiend just died, that he TP'd top. And Elena just died, she TP'd top. So you have two options there. You can either farm through your bottom jungle, or farm through bottom lane. Being in top jungle right now kind of just sucks, because they're there. And they've blocked off effectively three camps. You can't go from you can't go to this camp, you can't go to this camp, or this camp. Like of those three camps, 100% you cannot go to. This camp and this camp are being contested because you know for a fact they're somewhere in here. Yes, yeah, so like your bottom lane now, this is good. And then because they're just showing, they're about to show mid lane, they showed mid lane, instantly go for this bottom tier one. And start farming in their area down here. This tier one tower has to die. If this, like, with a Dragon Knight on your team, you guys have to be grouping up around him, not you guys. Your, the rest of your team is a four man unit, you AFK farm elsewhere. You uh, send them all bottom lane, and you guys have to, have to take this tower. If you take that tier 1 tower, you have access to their jungle like they have access into yours. See how they just walked into your jungle like not even 5 minutes ago in game? 
They can do that because this hero and tower is dead. They have no threat of being backstabbed. If they walked in like this, and they AFK farm your jungle here, you have a TP point here, a TP point here, so you have the mid tier one up, and a TP point there. That's three ways that you can gank them. You can come from literally any angle and walk off any uh, route. You can go like this, or your team can, not you can. Just in case I say you, assume your team. You're in farm mode. At this point, you have to tell your team, like, we need this fucking bottom tier one down. I cannot play Dota if I do not have this tier one tower down. At this point, like, why are you doing a fight? Unite yourself to 35 gold. Cool, but that's not even one wave. Or that's just about one wave of gold. And typically when my team dies, I'm looking to trade objectives for, uh... Or creeps for objectives, like... Instead of pushing or farming that jungle, then come to top lane, farm that top lane first. Because you're punishing them for committing so many heroes into that fight, and then taking that tier 2. You, like, obviously they're going to trade a tier 2 for a tier 1, but you hypothetically just set up a situation where you traded a tier 2 for nothing. Like, whenever my team dies, my play there on AM would have either been, because I'm bottom lane, I'm, I'm still right here. So, if I'm here... And I know that their entire team's in this area here, and they have really shit catch. Their catch is SF walking at you and Yulesing, and you just don't counterspell. Hook, which sucks. Blink, or Dismember, which you should be able to click your uh, counterspell fast enough. A projectile stun, and a no mobility Wraith King. Phantom Lancer walking at you, or Lena walking at you, with their Vladimir's offering. So, the reason this is important, go Blink down here. You push out this wave down here, you kill all these creeps, these creeps are at the tier 1. This play doesn't happen. They, they just can't play in between your tier 2 tier 3. Because there's no way in hell that they can get anything off of that play besides a kill. Which they, they shouldn't be there in the first place, that's fucking mind-numbingly stupid they're doing that. Like, if you're pressuring down here, then you can, uh, creep skip them. They don't have a creep wave, you fortify this tier 2 when they come for it, which they're going for right now, because you didn't creep skip. And then they uh, take your tier 2. They can't take your tier 2 if you creep skip. Instead, you know for a fact their entire team is down here still. Why aren't you here? We're here. If you're here, Wraith King can't be here. Or if you're here, you can push in this tier 2 and trade tier 2 for tier 2. They commit 4 heroes for this, you commit 1. Logically speaking, that's going to be more favorable for you. I need TP bottom to join the fight. Don't join fights. I don't know what the fuck that was. I don't know why they're chasing you, and they found you. Killed him. Get them to the underscape, damn right. You're forcing fights. I don't think this is your job. If you guys want to be the one starting fights, it has to be Dragonite buying a Blink Dagger and him blinking in. Or Ligar buying a Blink Dagger and blinking in. Again, they have all their heroes mid. They're taking one of these two towers. You have to create some sort of pressure on the map. You can't AFK hit neutrals on your half of the map when there's uh, enemies pressuring your lane. Like, what does killing this small camp do for you when you could have... Blinked aggressively, killed this wave, and then, uh, oh, whoops. Uh, well, I'm still drawing. Like, you could have blinked in aggressively, far killed off this wave, and then farm this camp, this camp, and this camp. And you go over here and cut mid-wave, and then you've effectively pressured two lanes, because this wave isn't coming into your tier 3. So they just killed Sniper again, because Sniper sucks, because he's a Sniper player. And what do they get out of this? Nothing, because you've cut the wave. Like, you're doing the right thing now by trading a tier 1, or a tier 2 for a tier 3. Tier 2? Yeah. But, uh... They should be going high grounder for Roshan. Forcing a sniper buyback. Because you guys engage in shit. They can easily disengage at any point. Like, if they could just go for Roshan and go for high ground. You gotta, yeah. Keep forcing, uh... Other objectives. Make them split off the map. And again, there's no reason to blink aggressively. You can't kill that guy. As soon as you blink in aggressively there, they TP a here on the, the Tier 3. 
Let me just kill you. We're on to the tier two, but tier three is more likely because it's a two second lower time in a uh, EP. And because you went aggressive, you went back to base, so now it's like 30 seconds a minute of not farming. You know, top lane is being pressured, go creep to get don't play aggressive. Don't do it, you're a psychopath. His entire team is off the map. The entire team is not behind the Shadow Fiend. Hmm. This is okay. Like, you've caught up, like, your GPM is probably like 500, yeah, 500 something. Or getting close to 500 at least. And there's no reason for you to be hitting this tier 3 right now. I guess you want to force them back, but it is, yeah. I'm gonna rewind because I actually miss, I miss if they're in your base. What happened with this? So they're all hitting your tier 3. What's happening down the bottom? They're diving your base, killing shit. Okay. This is fine. The ideal play, though, would have been as soon as they start uh, grouping up for bottom and threatening at your tier 3, you instantly move bottom and cut the waves. Instead of pushing out this wave, because they're obviously going to take this tower lock quicker than you will. You just go blink bottom, cut this wave down here, and then have your team shrapnel off the wave and just play defensive. Because at worst, a second wave will come because you've missed the creep skip. And then uh, you can defend. Because at this point, like, you die somehow. You get all your mana burned. Yeah. That's not good. You just fed 1k gold to Phantom Lancer. Yeah, I think this replay is done. Yeah, I got like five minutes left. Yeah, so just uh, pressure lanes. Like, the biggest issue Antimage players have on themselves, especially in lower bracket games, as, as I said, why God, some guy scars his friends with the rank, like, 107 carry player, and he refuses to play Antimage in games far below his average because they just can't make space. You picked Antimage knowing that your bracket isn't the greatest at making space. They have by fucking... Hurricane Pike first item support silencer. They buy Shadow Blade Monkey King Bar Sniper. They buy okay, his items are still okay. He needs a blink dagger though. They buy a blade of alacrity on fucking Ligar. I guess this isn't good. So instead of you hitting your newts over here, hit the lane creeps and then farm their newts if you want. You farm their newts, they can't. You gotta create some amount of pressure on their half of the map to alleviate pressure on yourself and your team. And then look for creep skips. You probably could have defended this bottom rack solo if you just didn't give them a creep wave ever. The problem with that though is because you ignored mid lane as well. They have creeps here, so they broke back door with that wave. But yeah, be more aware of uh, how the map's gonna play out, like in terms of creeps pushing and de pushing. Don't AFK hit newts. That's really not good. Don't buy perseverance first. Perseverance should be the last thing you purchase. The void stone should be. Uh, ooh, what, who's next? Kurt Cameron on Silencer. I hate that hero. That hero is so boring to play. It's like stand there and you click W on people in lane. And then after that, you click R. That's it. That's, that's your whole game. Very Silencer is kind of alpha, though. Yeah, see, these items are fine. These items are actually really good for a support. Oh, these are not very good. This is also kind of weird. DC on him. Okay, okay. Uh, what were your comments on this game? One of this game, I'm trying to say this, but I'd like to know how to put up my kill count in a game like this one. Hey. Uh, what does your hero do in this game? My hero, whenever... What does that know? Really difficult game for you. I feel like there's no no real reason. Why does it even work it? Chuck Chan, what are you doing? Yeah, I don't really think there's much you do this game. Like I I guess they Shadow Blade in Venomancer ult you global to stop any sort of follow up. And you just like isolate the Venom. Oh you global and he use Chronosphere, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, okay, that's that's my job this game. Up my kill count in the silencer. Your hero doesn't get kills this game. Like, straight up. It's a 60-minute uh, game against an illusion-based hero and against Drill Ranger. And you have Ember Spirit, Faceless, Weaver, Tench. 
That's four hardcore damage dealers, assuming you build damage on this guy and this guy. You have two spear vessels. I'm gonna blame you for this one. Yeah, I knew it. Dirty dog. Yeah. Don't go two spear vessels. Yeah, we'll uh, take a quick gander through this one, because I don't imagine there's gonna be much I can help you with in terms of getting kills. Like... Balancer 5? Kinda is just there for global. And it, you mentioned that you got a lot of assists and stuff like that, which is very good. But getting kills isn't really your job, as I mentioned. I fucking hate that voice line. I almost had that one. That one annoys the hell out of me. It's so stupid. Uh, yeah, like 2, 10, and 30. It's pretty decent. You're in it about half the kills. A hero whose fight contribution is pretty mediocre, past like 35 minutes. Uh, starting items, I don't like these. Double mantle, clarity, double branch, two tangos, kind of just seems garbage. I, uh, would recommend, if I'm it's a, a four silencer, picking up a sage's mask. It will give you more mana regen than two, uh, mantles would, for cheaper. And then I can just freely spam my W, like the entire remaining thing. Oh, it's only 10 seconds at level 1. What is 15, 30, 45, 60? Interesting. Oh yeah, we'll just like go through this quickly. I'm going to focus more on laning Sage, because that is when you can, uh... Get... Huh. All good drill, dual safe lane. These guys were partied, right? They were not partied. Good. Why do you have a maelstrom on I'll go. Okay, yeah. I'll comment on like the first 15 minutes because there really isn't much you do with silencer for kill threat. Like No one's ever oh, don't do that. You got really lucky there. Naga should have denied that. You just randomly were auto attacking at that was really bad. Don't just uh, mindlessly auto attack range creeps like that if they uh, start attacking you. Just walk them back to wave. Because if you did that, your lane's going to push. Because essentially one range creep didn't attack a single creep after you dragged them away. Don't you dare. So now you have two ranged. They have one. You're going to push in their favor. Which means the, the dual core should be getting a free farm as they say it. Oh my god, every time. Always happens. The absolute numpties in these games just prove me wrong every time I say something. Yeah, like if you have a Sage's Mask, you're still at full mana. I played a game of Silencer like... I played a game of Silencer like two days ago, and I bought Sage's Mask level 1. It was game winning. If you're not game winning, I lost. I played Silencer. But, uh, lane winning for sure. You can freely, like, you get that, you get Magic Wand, you get Unfused Raindrops. You can freely spam all of your spells without ever having to worry. And, that's, like, Silencer's biggest power spike is, uh, pre, like, 30 minutes before they have any basics. And especially in lane. He's a very strong laner. It's like when you're, I'll, I'll only mention kill threat and I want to keep it on kill threat. Uh, when your offlaner is under their tier 1 like that, just walk out of XP range. Give Weaver to level 4 instead of both of you like level 3.5, three, 3 and 3 quarters, whatever. Like at whatever point it is in the game, just give him full XP. Unless the enemy is actively contesting him, like uh, harassing him, denying him, all that stuff. Then uh, don't contest, or don't sap his XP. You're aggroing a lot of the creeps over yourself. Mid Venom. This makes no sense. Why is the Venom mid and the Drone Naga in the safe lane together? But Venom was the off laner. Hudge is a 5 or 4. Rubik is a 4 or 5. Then Bro mid, Naga carry. That just seems infinitely better. I do not like that word. If, okay, like that word has some purpose for protecting you from Pudge, 
But Pudge has no kill threat on the Weaver. That's my primary concern. I don't really give a shit if he comes bottom and kills me. I primarily care for uh, if he comes bottom and kills my Weaver. Because once Weaver hits like level 5, level 6, he can just solo lane. Because the only way they kill him is if he's slow on the finger. And uh, doesn't Shikuchi off of the uh, Gust. You know, she could you off it, but like as the gust is coming out, it's a pretty slow projectile. Like you easily have like a second to a second and a half. Can't. I think your lane contribution has been too high, but uh. Not like you're in much of a lane where you can pressure. As I say that, you literally get two kills. Well played, Sister Ranger. She's proud of you. Naga instantly cops the fucking tome like the absolute animal he is. And, uh, Veno got capped by Weaver. Really interesting game going on. Look like right here, let's give, give a Weaver a solo XP. Yeah, I, uh, I'm gonna fast forward into way further into the game because I feel like nothing is happening. Point of view. Guess some place to be uh, out there. The team forcing fights with no global and no chronosphere, like no void there, is super weird. Oh, he's coming in hot. Big chrono. Oh my god, this guy's an animal. Poor Seth Weaver. No! Rubik. Yeah, I uh, I'm, I honestly have no idea. Like, I'm trying to stick with what you guys are saying because that's like, oh, you guys all ask questions and I answer them. I could obviously nitpick this game and try to help you go like not two and six, or have more than twelve in thirty two minutes in. But like, you're a five silencer. You're you're not playing five silencer to rack up the int or to make plays happen on the map. Your hero is purely for counter initiation purposes. Or, uh, yeah, preventing counter initiation or counter initiating in the first place. Like, hypothetically, if they had an actual Naga Siren combo, like a disruptor, and they song a siren, walk up, drop static storm, you could either global beforehand when he's walking up, which would be the proper thing to do, or to uh, global as they drop static storm so he can't cancel the song. That one's is way riskier though, because if he cancels it right away, you waste your global and you cost your team the fight. But I guess, that's the whole purpose of support silencer. You're there to cancel those black holes to prevent those sh uh, time lapses, to counter the Ember Spirit from uh, jumping out, Void Spirit from jumping out, all that stuff. You're not there to like fight. I would be. Yeah, I would have global to save my ember there. Never hear the end of this. Ops. Yeah, uh, I don't really know for this game. I think, well, a major thing to keep in mind. If you ever want to make plays happen on the map, you know how to take the tier 1 tower. This tier 1 tower is at full health. You guys have faceless void uh, silencer. They can't team fight you. They have no team fight. Like, what's their plan if you go Chrono the Daedalus Naga? Those tranquils. We neutralize. Okay. Yeah, what's their plan if you go Chrono and Global? They have no counter initiation. The whole point of the sounds their void combo. They, they literally cannot fight you. They have to bu use or buy Manta Styles, Yules, Lotus, or BKBs. They need some form of, form of dispel. Which they have none. They have a single basic on their entire team. The Naga Siren is the most fucking useless sack of shit in this entire game. 
He's actually worse than the Pudges somehow. Who's buying an Orchid? That's not a thing. So yeah, if you want to make plays happen, you got to take these the Tier 1 Tower mid and Tier 1 Tower bottom half a drop like pre-25 minutes every game. Or you AFK on your half of the map and you sit there like, man, what do we do? We can't make plays because you can't get onto this area of the map. This entire section over here, this entire section up here where you want to be is blocked off because this Tier 1 Tower is at 100% health. Yeah, I think that's uh, my tips for now. If you want to get... He actually managed to miss you with his ultimate. What the fuck was it? I don't see where the threat... Like, where that global is. They whiffed all their spells. Realistically, they're going to try disengaging. They wasted Venno ultimate, drove his DC, and they whiffed hook. Yeah, yeah. I think if you're looking to make plays, don't pick Silencer. If you want a, a position for that can make plays happen, whether solo or team fight or small team fights, pick Earthshaker, Earth Spirit, Void Spirit, Ember Spirit, Techies, uh, Clockwork, Phoenix, Spirit Breaker, Tiny, Tusk, uh, Wyvern, Earth Mage. Queen of Pain, Shatter Demon, get the point. Don't pick Silencer Position 4 if you want to make kills happen. Elder Titan, Undying, Sapphire, Nyx, you know, like the entire Position 4 hero pool can make plays, Silencer cannot. I wouldn't be picking Silencer to look for kills happen. Who can wrap up this one then? Yeah, just be a bit more like aware i'm going to comment from the landing phase that's what i'm looking at uh be more aware of like when you're sapping xp like it's fine to get a bit of xp but fully sapping it is not okay like not not okay it's bad some supports are greedy and they like doing that and some offlaners are fine with that most don't though because that that offlaner wants to get his level six like weaver needs his level six to function in that lane to full effect because they have no kill threat on him. They have the four seconds of Gust. I'm assuming he's a level one Gust. They have four. Wait, it is four, five, six, seven, right? Three, four, five, six. Oh. They have a three second window to kill Weaver. That's not happening. Because he can uh, time lapse off the ensnare. Or Shikuchi dodge it or whatever if they mess up the timing. So, like, him having level six is super value because then that leaves you to go fuck off and you can go hit heroes top lane and go try lane top and then you go get a bunch of kills because people just don't understand how to play against try lanes anymore it's been out of the meta for like three years or whatever like i understand when you're taking xp and when you're uh contributing to them getting xp senior fiddles monkey classic monkles game one not had a feather performance could I have done better that's a good way of looking at the game I am quite happy that you uh, are not happy with just a win, because many people are. Where's Munkles? There's Munkles. Okay. Items. What's my biggest concern this game? Biggest concern is being kited. My team has no lockdown. My team is shit locked down, because this guy shouldn't have eggs or fresher. Why do you... Lock... Three desolators. Who got it first? It had to have been you, right? The deso race. Oh, Quap got it first. Did you actually get out desoed by a crystal maiden? You did. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Yeah, you were like beat by a minute. Oh, this is heartbreaking. Damn, she beat you by like two minutes, almost exact. Two minutes, four seconds. Damn, why do you have three desos? Uh, yeah, but back to what I was saying. My biggest concern of Munkles this game is that I'm just going to be avoided. Your team is pretty shit at keeping them inside of your ultimate. You have double rock, you have a pushback mechanic from Queen of Pain who can essentially push them out. You have stone gaze, which doesn't encourage them to stay into the 
Monkey King ult. And your Frostbite. So I think I'd be looking for either Scotty or a Basher. Probably Basher. Give me a second. Yeah, because like the reason I want to go Basher here is because although Basher doesn't work on the monkeys anymore in your ultimate, you still can essentially lock down Weaver. If you can lock down Weaver or man fight him a bit better, it'll help you a ton. Like hypothetically in this game, you can be glimpsed out of your ultimate, you can be kicked out of your ultimate by Tusk, you'll be kited in BKB because they have Lara's Punch, they have Black Hole, they have AA Ultimate which can or, uh, make your Jingu non-existent, Weaver beats you because you can't effectively trade hit with them, and Enigma beats you because you can't fight in Black Hole. The only thing you're good at though is killing his Eidolons, and uh, your ultimate persists through his Black Hole, obviously. But, when did you pick Monkle? Last pick? Fifth pick. Okay. You were off lane? You are off lane, Monk. Fair enough, not enough talking about that. We're going to comment on this quickly. Because, uh, yeah, I, like, it's like a very unenjoyable monkey game. I'm just going to get kited super hard. No matter how farmed I am, the, the same problems are going to persist. Where you need to be going these, like, hyper defensive items to survive or to stay on top of them. I watch AA's player perspective on King Uncles. And... Alright, rule number one. No picking monkey offlane, ever. This here is not an offlaner. He has several major issues for why he's not an offlaner. Number one. Look at the size of the, the mid lane, or the top lane. The lane you're going to. Normally the lane will be about here. I'm going to make it a bit bigger. It'll be about here. Normally, if this enemy support is good, which means you have this box right here to trade hits with the enemy. Not a very long route, uh, like, amount of time. Let's flip it. You're safe lane, monkey. Lane's normally about here. You have all the way up to here to trade hits with this guy. Off lane is the hard lane because it is longer. You are further from your tower, you're closer to the enemy tower. You, they will be getting that bonus regen, bonus armor, that TP access. You don't have that. All of that stuff is about 5 to 10 seconds away, depending on how slow you are and all that. So there's like stuns and slows and your movement speed, all that stuff. They essentially have like a 10 second advantage when they have this uh, safe lane versus offline matchup off the get-go. Also, careers take roughly 4 seconds longer to get from your offline to the, your safe lane. From what I don't know what the new number is, but I know what the old flat movement speed courier is 36 to the off lane, 34 to the mid lane, 32 to the safe lane, roughly, assuming you're at your tier one. So, uh, yeah, that's rule number one. Rule number two your hero has one base armor. Carry apparition? Yeah, your hero has one base armor. Your hero isn't built to trade hits. Like, that's not true. Your hero isn't built trade hits in the sense that they're going to be trading hits with in the safe lane. They're going to pull the lane back with this pull key up. Lane will be about here. The ship parishion carry is going to be playing back here poking at you. Non-stop poking at you. And there are five that's going to be in this tree line here or this tree line here. And how do you stop that? You're not fast enough to walk at him. And then the final part is or not even the final part. The third part your hero's farm demanding. Fourth part, he doesn't buy auras. He's not an offlaner. He can't start fights. He doesn't push towers. He can't group up around a monkey king. But he needs items. And what point are we on? We're on the fifth point? I think the fifth point. Fifth point is being you picked him third. Very, very few people ever first phase monkey king or second, like first phase in captain's mode. Like first three pick a monkey king. You picked it seeing what? I think it was Tusk Disruptor? AA Disruptor, you picked into two heroes that kind of beat you. This guy can scout you in the tree line. Kinetic Field gives fl uh, flying vision as well as uh, Thunder Strike provides vision. He can glimpse you in. If you have a Primal Spring, he can glimpse you out. This guy can make you not get Jingu health. 
just like your entire hero is just trading hits, getting low, then fully healing back up with one boundless. Don't pick Munkles off late. Anyways, back to the game. with a bit in the laning phase and then I'll skip forward and go further to the game and comment on that. I'm quite interested in uh nice boundless. Very smart. Using spells to secure range groups is very good. Although it wouldn't have got to 90 still got yourself like gold. And you have maiden or does she have maiden or level one? Level two. Yeah, because this is just rough. Like your hero is just so useless against Tusk uh Tusk apparition. Because AA has one of the longest base attack ranges in the game. I wouldn't have expected it to be a carry apparition to be honest. Oh you got first blood, you're an animal. Nice. It feels as like if they don't have to actually force things. Like, that first blood shouldn't have happened just because they should be poking you down, forcing you to burn all your tangles in the first, like, three, four minutes of the lane. Because you don't have a salve. Oh, no, you used a salve. Yeah, you double tango salve. They just force out all your regen. They never, ever give you Jingu stacks. And then they go for a kill. Because they're going to have you, like, 400, 300, 500 health. Which that's a lot more likely to get you killed. Oh, so if they had a Weaver up there or an actual hard carry, this guy. If it was an AA whose primary spell is on like a 15 second cooldown or whatever. You'd be dead. Like, your laning isn't terrible. Pop, like, yeah, a lot of it's just your hero has one base armor. You have four now, but you're still... Poor base armor compared to other offerings is very low. At this point, Centaur would have over 1k health, have an AoE disable that's way better than Boundless. Oh, those shards. Aiden somehow still dies. Haven't I seen Kindergarten Cop in another game? Are you party cute with him? Pretty confident some of the replay I did had this guy. I kind of that name. Positioning this aggressive is super risky. You don't see any support from the map. You don't see any heroes from the map. They could, they could go on you right now. Huh. Would have guessed. <laughs> Yeah. They had a plus one there, you were dead. And you would know if they had a plus one or not, because you don't see anything. Your best bet is position as defensive as possible in this lane. Wait, is Tusk farming? Is Tusk farming? I just realized that. What the fuck? Who safe lane carries a Tusk? Why does AA have a Kaya then? I thought he was to carry. Interesting. I'm I'm not, I obviously haven't seen this yet. If you just attacked Tusk once, he was dead, and if you battle struck both of these guys, they were both dead. Let's see if you Missed out on eight kills. Yeah, you did. Just don't disrupt your kill 100%. You get AA. Now you get AA. AA walked to his tower. He may have lived. Well played. Yeah, just uh, be more conservative with your stun there. That would have been three kills instead of two. 
small thing, but it still would have made a difference at some point. Especially when you're an off laner, you like getting as many, as much gold and uh, stuff as you can. That would have been your echo saber assuming you killed him. Oh, you're dumb and dead. There you go. You gotta kill that bug. That bug, yeah. Your play there was either kill the bug and try jumping away or something, or to TP out immediately. Just hope for the best. And black hold, yeah. Yeah, another issue with the monkey off lane. It can just walk at you and you have no counterplay. Once they show both of these heroes in a glimpse, I'm immediately running. My warlock is dead. Especially since Quap is walking over. Like, yeah, you're just incentivizing them to commit ultimates, and she blinked aggressive. Shayla wanted Disruptor. My Disruptor is worth more than the Queen of Pain is. I find that very hard to believe. The Disruptor is dominating. How? Quap is the high facet in the game. Does she not like his way of her uh, golden a disruptor? Disru like, Quap is the second highest, disruptor is the second lowest, and Quap got. That's so dumb. And yeah, you're just trying to force fights when your hero can't fight. You're an offline monkey. Alright, I'm gonna fast forward to where you take your ultimate and go for a fight. I'll watch the next fight. I'm not a Monkey King player or a carry player, but I feel like I, uh... I don't know if BKB does anything for me. They just have so much... They have such a bad Monkey King game. Oh, wait, it's a fucking scoreboard. I somehow kill Queen of Pain after missing Static Storm. It was Black Hole. Hmm. Why is Queen of Pain saying well played? It would have been a 4 for 0 if you were half decent at the game. If you didn't fuck up just walking into the mall and then got saved by the Disruptor and then killed himself again? If I'm a offline Monkey King, by the way, I would have maxed out Primal Spring ages ago. Because my hero has no way of being an actual offlaner, you uh, have to be something to push out waves. If you just try farming the map, like, in this, this bully-style build with this max Jingu, max Boundless, where you just run around and push people out of lane, you're just gonna die. You're an offline Monkey King. You are, like, 30k below where you want to be right now. Even higher, you should be like pushing for 15k at this point, ideally. So, like, you're super, super under farm, so this bully style item build and uh, skill build it really helped me in this game. If I max out my primal spring, then I can at least push out waves and buy my team like 5 10 minutes of free farm for the entire game by me just randomly walking around and I tank like 3 or no deaths. Why did Quap just snipe the fucking orb for me? Did you ask him to? Did just pass it to him? Yeah, so right now, what have you accomplished in the past minute? You got a TP on you, you live. Die here? No, you live. <laughs> kind of an awkward BKB. That's where he turns in black holes you? Yeah, and he just dies. Yeah, classic. Well, you die. That's fine. Yeah, so, like, what I was going to comment on before that dumb fight broke out, one, that fight shouldn't be happening. Two, it, it could be happening if they played the dive team played it properly. If you had a TP on you, what did you accomplish by being the frontliner here? Like, very little. If you were top lane and you just kept primal springing from, like, here to into the wave, then jumping back in here, and just repeating the cycle over and over again, and you just keep bouncing back and forth, and keeping top lane out, or bot lane out, or mid lane out, whatever lane your team wants out and doesn't want to go to, you just keep doing that. 
They can hunt you super easily, though. They have literally four ways of look, scouting trees, and they have a... Excuse me, they have midnight portal. They break trees. Like, it's super, super hard for you to do that consistently. But you can look to do that. Because if you were top lane right now, and you just kept panel springing, they may not have even uh, had a five there. They may have had, like, Enigma back here, TPing into a farm, because he's, he's a new hitter or something. A new hitter? I don't know if he's a new hitter. I haven't seen him hit. Yeah, it's like you just buy space and they TP a hero top. And you walk four heroes and you have a TP ready. You walk four heroes into your jungle, ward, D ward this entire area, and you just reclaim the entirety of your bottom jungle. Because you just push out a lane top and force a singular TP. If you have no offlaning mechanisms, but you have wave clearing mechanisms, you can play this sort of like. I don't even know what to call it. Like a, like a pseudo 3 slash 4 type play. Or a hero, you can just like buy your team time. Again, awful Munkles game. But you are a highly mobile hero who is capable of pushing out waves. I would be taking probably the AOE talent at level ten in the uh, cast range and the primal spring damage. Maybe the level ten talent's your personal choice though. But I think for how I would be looking to play all point Monkey King. As more of a scout who buys my Medusa time, because Medusa 1 and 5 is this game. I keep that in mind. Everything I do this game has to revolve around my Medusa. What is the best thing I can do for my Medusa? How can I, what item can I buy to enable my Medusa? Look, look, I'd look at it like that, because Monkey King is not winning this game for you. It's a terrible Monkey King game. You're 7, 7, and 10, which isn't bad for an offlaner. You've been 17 out of 20 kills. Really good stuff. But your hero doesn't function in an underfarmed manner like a, a typical offlaner would. A Marvel Blink Dagger and a Desolator at this point in the game could contribute in the fight. A Centaur with a Crimson Blink could contribute in the fight. A Monkey King with an Echo BKB against this lineup, not a chance. And then again, like you've been walking around aimlessly. Same thing I come to with the Anti Mage game. Instead of you being walking around into their five heroes, because I know for a fact they're all going to be here when I see them now, and two, it's common sense. They're not in Roshan, assumingly, because they're not going to take Roshan. And they're not showing the map. And we didn't get any sort of map control back after here. We didn't deward or reward. Assume they're here. If I'm going to assume they're bottom lane, I'm going to assume they want this bottom tier too. Their ultimates are back up. If you're in the tree line right here, and as soon as this wave came in, I. Primal Spring on it instantly killed with Primal Spring Boundless Strike. Just jump back into the trees like up here. Do the same thing when an X wave comes in 20 seconds or so. And you just made them waste two minutes of their time. That's two minutes of Medusa free farming. Medusa should have like 700 GPM at this point. She doesn't, but let's say she's for, let's say she has 500. That's 1k gold she got for free because you just sat bottom lane pushing out waves. Or you're top before push top lane out get into this tier two tier two either dies or they took tv back then you walk in five in here if you're not doing any of the above you're playing defensive in the tree line and now a fight's breaking out where your maiden is jumping first it's very interesting how this fight's happening Are they fight without enigma where's the new hitter he's micro he's literally he's literally afk Oh no, he's A-clicked. Really high impact stuff. Watch your map. His fight's got, or his team has got white. Like, look at this three-man black hole right here. After both golems been wasted. Because he's fucking microing down here to right-click creeps as he farms a small camp. Great, you made 40 gold, dude. Congrats. Okay, yeah, like... I feel like dire team's out team fights you guys super hard the only concern is this warlock pick is actually really good because that's your counter to the enigma this game but he's not good this, like his warlock not he's not good he's fucking up and how he's using his ultimate if you're a warlock you can never ult until enigma black holes ever if he blinks in and black uh bkb black holes how do you cancel it unless you uh warlock ultimate don't get six for like three seconds two seconds to get stoned that's assuming he's looking at her. Not good. They're orchiding Roche. Hmm. 
Yeah, I think my biggest tip this game, like, I'll wrap it up off of this. You just gotta pick an actual off lane. It's gonna make your game so much easier. Like, you actually did pretty well, this game, all things considered. It being an awful, awful Monkey King game. Being an even worse offlane Monkey King game. You still managed to do a lot. Or a fair bit. But, uh, push out lanes. Like, if my hero is not directly contributing, or, like, I have no real reason to be positioning behind my supports, or my offlane, or my carry, I mean, I'm just going to go push out a lane. If you push out a lane, you're going to force reaction. If you force reaction, you can make something happen on the map. You just went from a hero who can't initiate a fight to a hero that just made a fight happen. All because you pushed out the lane. All because you can click the E button. The W-E combo. Feels very interesting that you got the Aegis and not the Medusa. Hmm. Okay, several things for this. One, the only reason, like, if you look at chat, that Enigma is missing. Well, yeah, that is true. Enigma is missing. Brain. Uh, Russian sl Russians Slayer. The animal. Russians hate him. But, uh, he doesn't have a carry. Why can't you end? He's mentioned it. Why can't you guys end? Your team fight is significantly better than yours. Insanely good. The only reason that it's not doing well is because they aren't very good, and Warlock is actually in this game. If Warlock wasn't in this game, you guys probably would have lost. I, I don't like Warlock as a hero. He's your only way of dealing with Enigma this game. Besides Enigma's lack of a frame. Like, you have no way of killing him properly. You can't really handle his split push because you're not really split pushing properly or deep pushing, split pushing, whatever. You have no black hole cancer. He has BKB up, which is very important. But the reason why this is important, why wouldn't you give Medusa the Aegis there? How do they kill a level 25 Medusa if you wait like, you have the tome, you wait like two minutes or whatever? Oh no, you just want to get, wait for the second Aegis then. Don't force things. You win late game. Don't force. Force, you might lose. But, uh, give Medusa the Aegis. Get her level 25 or a stat item or something. Like, she has to be tankier. And you frontline her. And only Medusa hits is tier 3. The reason that's the play is because, one, did they kill Medusa twice? Two, Medusa's the only person in a tier 3. I mean, she's the only person on the map showing. When you attack an enemy tower, it shows your location. All of you are hiding back here, like, you're over here, you're, like, up here in the trees, the boys, like, the co-op co is over here, the warlock's down here, the maiden's, like, over here, whatever, I don't care where. And then they jump Medusa. They die. Because they have to use spells to kill Medusa, and they have to use a lot of spells to kill Medusa, and they have to use even more spells to kill her a second time. And in that time, that, like... 20 second window, you have a Medusa dying, respawning, and dying again, potentially. You can use your spells, and you can jump them. You have that counter-initiation tool. They can't black hole, ever, until they see Warlock. Assuming this is a high-ranking game where they look for the Warlock first, which is what they should be doing. They cannot black hole until Warlock is dead or resulted is down. So then they're going to have to try doing a smoke play. They were going to have to wrap around like this and try finding you guys. Which is why it might be okay for you to be up here breaking smokes. It doesn't matter. This is... This is in the bracket where they'd probably do that. But, uh, yeah, so like Medusa's here hitting us. And then they're forced into two plays. Three plays, really. As I said, play number one. Smoke and wrap around. Catch your backliners. You get a ward up here if you're dire. And you fight them like this. Play number two. Let the Medusa take your axe. Not a fun one. Or play number three. Jump the Medusa. Which then leads into play number two. Because they're going to die and then Medusa takes your axe. Give the agent to the person who's going to hit the tier 3 if you ever go high ground. If you guys fucked up and gave it to the wrong person, wait next Aegis. You have complete map control. With that Aegis, you take down all the tier 2s, get complete map control, you ward and deward the entire map, 
and you camp them inside of their base. You get a ward like up here and a ward over here. And any single player that make off the map or outside of their base, you will see, unless there's smoke. And they're not gonna smoke, I can tell you that much. And if they do, you'll be ready for it. Your group is five, you're covered in wards and d-wards, and you'll see with them when they place wards, because you're really good at the game. All that sort of stuff. Or, if you're not determined to end the game now, your skin at your late game isn't as good, and that even like five minutes of them not free farming will be detrimental to your team. For whatever reason, you get the Aegis. Like, if you have the Aegis, you solo hit the tier three. Make them jump you and then kill you again after they commit spells. They're probably going to use like Walrus Punch AA Blast almost definitely for you in that first life. Which means no AA ult after you respawn. Very nice. So I'm sure you get what I mean. But yeah, I think I'll wrap it up here for this game. And then uh, go into the next one. So yeah, like just focus on picking it. Well, one, pick an actual offlaner. Monkey is not an offlaner. Mars is very good. Centaur is very good. Uh, we're offlane heroes. Legion's mediocre. Mars is good. Necker is good. Prophet, in my opinion, is like one of the best heroes in the game and is super undervalued. Why aren't my pictures moving? Interesting. Just notice this. Uh, first of the back's okay. Beastmaster is like top tier. They're one of those guys. They're good. They're offlaners. They can do stuff. Monkey's not an offlaner. And then if I if I messed up and your team kind of has to like make space for Medusa to farm her 500 GPM worth of items. Go push out lanes. Creep skip. Uh, in a dead lane. Primal spring. Boundless strike. Jump back into a tree. Go to safety. Just keep jumping away after you do that. Don't get caught. Do that, you open up the map entirely because these guys are going to chase you. I've seen a lot, a lot of sub 2k games. They will chase you and you have to realize that and just jump away. And if you do that for like 15 minutes straight, that's 15 minutes of free farming 500 GPM madness from Schwans, the animal himself. If I'm scared of this guy's Medusa, the Dire team should be too. Uh... Cynics ND played Void Spirit. We got stomped here, but I plucked my tips I got before the game. I feel like I did quite well. Aside from that, I played a lane that I did not want to play. We had drafting issues. I was third pick to avoid gold, gold loss. And Husker requested mid as well as off lane was full as well. Went safe lane. And what could have been done to hinder the Monkey King from snowballing? I can tell you this. Monkey King was not the off laner. That's the first step to stopping him from snowballing. Put him in the off lane. But that'll hinder his game. I feel like I'm in the best out of the game overall. I'm sure regarding my experience. Okay. Void Spirit. You I know very little about. Fuck off. Uh, where is that? Oh, this is going to be the Monkles. Holy. I swear to God, is it going to be an offlane monkey? Oh, I hope to God it's not. Please. If it's an offlane monkey, I'm actually just uninstalling this game. I can't be proven wrong again. This will be like a career ending for me, and I've never even had a career in the first place. It's six pick. Oh my god, it's gonna be an offlane monkles. Oh god. Oh, I didn't even download the replay. Alright, comment on the uh, draft if you said that it was a bit of an issue. Oh boy. I don't know, it shows a dice if they're random. Okay, rule number one, don't first pick your cheese hero. You're playing a brew, a Huskar, a bat rider, unless he's meta, Meepo, something like that, don't first pick it. It doesn't work. People pick troll warlords, pick troll rangers, wraith king, pick monkles, because monkles is well against him outside of lane. You lose. You go own a hundred, like this fucking animal did. The Vladimir's. I don't even know what lane. I think you said it was mid lane. Do you think it's okay for a mid laner to get out farmed by every single hero on the opposing team in his support? In his off lane spend? I think. Probably not good. 
Probably, probably not good. I'll tell you that much. Uh, you third picking Void Spirit. That is totally fine. Void Spirit can really be first picked and put into a core role. That hero is ungodly versatile. You can run him as a hard carry, a mid, an offlaner, or a four. In competitive games, I've seen it all. Except for five. I don't think I've seen a five Void Spirit yet. I don't think I want to. That sounds kind of bad. But yeah, like the hero is super versatile. You third picking Void Spirit here. To me, would it indicate it's an offlane or a four void spirit if it was one of my games? I wouldn't assume it's a carry of void spirit, but it would be something I could consider. It's not bad. Finish your boots. I tried their phase boots. Uh, the comments is could have been better, correct? My desktop audio been muted this whole. Hope they have it. You know, they're fucking out. Their, their party's full. Why are they even inviting me? Where do I turn off the thing again? I keep messing. Uh, okay. I'll just watch it and just give you general comments. My uh, voice spirit is not up to par. The thing I mentioned, I've never played. In an actual game. I've played it like three times. Friends on like private lobbies, I think. Watch out. Positive win rate, sixty-six percent win rate on Sven. Be careful. Wait, sixty, not sixty-six. Not the three, and I got confused. Uh. Lane, do you think you're going to? I think you're... These all items for safe lane are very bad. So, I have like looking at their draft. This gives me, like, I don't even know what to say about that. That is awful. But the problem with awful drafts is they're hard to predict the lanes. You're going to get bullied a shit ton. Because, uh, hypothetically, the monkey could be off lane, but she shits on you. It could be a dro off lane, shits on you. A troll off lane, same thing. Rhythm off lane. That's fairly decent. We're on offing. So, in order to beat them, to out regen them. You can't go double mango, one set of tangos into null talisman. Don't walk them up, you're gonna take so much damage for this. Hmm. Once again, I'm proven wrong, it seems. All right, thank God. I'm actually so happy. You actually have no idea how happy I am that monkey just showed mid. <laughs> I was actually horrified. I actually don't know what I would have done if monkey was uh, bottom lane. I actually think I would have stopped playing. I'm very determined. If you, oh. unfortunately. It's very interesting that your Pudge is taking last hits, but he's actually missed like all of them. He somehow missed, he took like, he was attacking I think four creeps and actually managed to miss all of them but one. He's actually hurting your game so much. As I say that, he got first blood. My god, I'm so good at this game, everyone. I promise I didn't buy my account. Hmm. Yeah, uh, how new is this Pudge? He's your new player, isn't he? 352 wins, so about like 10k games probably of watching this performance. Who's your new player? Oh man. That's we demo man. Full 15. I'm good. I think it's him. I don't know. Either way, your uh, Pudge is kind of working you here. Pudge is the, the, the third guy. You're actually in tri uh, against the tri lane right now. You don't even know it. That's the scariest part. If the enemy team was smart, recognize that you have no regen. They're just going to beat the shit out of you right now. Wraith can stun you, Marana arrow you, anything they can. Your curry is dead. I think I'm going to stop talking. Everything I say is wrong. Dyer's courage has been 
Oh, I thought it was your career that died. That like monkey was bottom or something. I got really excited. Uh, yeah, but like, be careful your courier. As I mentioned before, you just showed in lane with no regen. And you got a salve and a no talisman. Now, hypothetically, if the enemy team was competent or smart or recognized this or whatever, checking people items is very important. I'll explain why. If they realize that you have no regen, they're going to get hyper, hyper aggressive on you. But not try to kill you, but just push you out of lane. And then... That'll mean, when you get that salve called in, do you instantly use it so you're back down to zero region? Or do you use all your tangos so you're back down to zero region? And then you call out more. And you just keep repeating that cycle because you just aren't buying enough region. You gotta buy a region for advance. Like, you have tangos coming in now, which is very good. Those tangos should have been here like three minutes ago. Because if they got aggressive on you, what is your counterplay to that? Walking back to base isn't really an option. Especially at 295 movement speed or whatever the heck the Void Spirit is. Yeah, 295 I think he had two movement speed here. I think he's 305 on, on launch and 300 and 295. I think. I think. I think. You're buying the wards as a uh, hard carry. I like it. I wouldn't buy both though. You're kind of hurting your team more than you're helping them. Unless it's like full and stash, like all four of the wards are there and no more wards are spawning in. You're kind of hurting them a fair bit. Just because. Now they can't take a ward if they want one. If there's like three, I'd call in one. If it three again, I'd buy like two and go ward or something. But, uh... You know. Consider an alternative. And there goes your career. I wasn't wrong. I'm happy. It did die. I have a lot of mangoes. I think you're buying a lot of regions that you're probably not going to need at this point. I feel like on safe lane void spirit, I just want to go like bottle void stone into yules if I want to get a yules skin. But you need a yules skin. Very good. You need to purge off the uh... The gust, as well as it can drop aggro from true lord's battle trance. And you can dodge projectiles and stuff, and you can set up your remnant, but like... You can always do that stuff to see what's important this game to get. My support isn't going to pull for me, I'm going to pull myself. I don't know what my lane, like, you've been in front of their tier 1 tower. And I mentioned the last game with the Monkey King. What is he doing? If you're going for last hit Pudge... Let's get it. There you go, like that. Good job, dude. But, uh, yeah, what are they saying? Yeah, it's like, look at where your lane is. One, you're holding the lane up. Just walk backwards, it's like, walk back like this and have them echo onto your range creep. And it kills the range creep, but you get a free range creep deny. That's when the bounty is way too late. Oh, you're trying to buy your void stone to eat. There you go. I'm curious when you use these clarities, because these clarities, oh, there we go. But now it's going to be like, what are these clarities going to do? This is fine. I can dig this TP. Hey, Husker TP bottom! Oh, damn! What happened with that? It's in the zone. Oh, you went aggressive on monkey. The skill builds... Yeah. The skill builds off. Uh, it's a Huskar. Huskar shits in this hero in lane. This guy must have fucked up super hard. And I don't really know how. You only have a disarm, magic damage nuke, regen, a pushback. I don't see how Husker in any sense is. Yeah, don't get aggressive there. You know that Monkey King is stronger than you. He's three levels higher, now four. Let's just get Adelon out of there. What's my plan if I was doing this in the game? Keep farming, like, 
Don't go over. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of weird. Like, you're just randomly moving around the map. Like, you're a carry void spirit. You want to want to finish off your boots and to finish off your mules. Because you left bottom, you lost your tier 1 tower because Wraith King is going to take your ter uh, tower. It's like the one thing offlaner Wraith King is capable of doing. But the fact it's a shit offlaner. And now because you use both your ultimates, you might die. I feel like you do die. Pretty sure you're gonna get too aggressive and monkey comes on you. No. Monkey's gonna be killing uh Pudge Graph. Be very careful of using your ultimate, like the farming mechanism. If they just hit you like two times, you would have died. With how much you're moving around the map and how much you're uh, buying a region items, just buy a bottle. Would have been so much more value for you. Every single play you make on the on the map has to be around Bounty Hunter. You cannot make any play on the map alone. Their heroes do not die to you. And even if they did, why not play with Bounty? These are pretty mobile invisibility heroes that can scout ahead, give you extra gold, and provide extra damage. And the TP cancel if needed. If you lead off with their Yules into the Ether Remnant. Oh, that's unfortunate. Another thing though, like, when your team just died there, too. If I place all of my wards here in a mango tree, I, I technically have three sources of vision. Nice. Three sources of vision here. I may as well play there. They want to, they're going to ward bottom lane. I'm going to check their, their, uh, they have no wards bottom lane. Interesting. Uh, if they're bottom lane, then like you can't really go there. You don't know if they have wards or not. You have no obs or sentries anywhere in that half of the map. You're dead here. Oh. Unfortunate. But you did have a uh, Yules into remnants, so you could have essentially or effectively escaped. It guarantees you hit your remnant. Small thing. Problem with using your ultimate to farm. Camera work is not very great. Demo man double kill. You get him, you dirty dog. Like so you guys took a fight on your under your vision. You guys won it. Didn't have much to do with why you guys won. Ooh. Hmm. Interesting. Don't get aggressive. Troll. Yules him or Yules yourself. You gotta do one or the other. This Yules has done very little for you in a very good Yules game. Like the two things I said it did have not been utilized yet. Or three things, but like the, the two reasons for this game specifically. Uh, this Yule has been very useless. My, my tips for this game, you gotta pose your Bounty Hunter. Like, Bounty Hunter, you guys lack playmakers, except for you. So it has to be Bounty Hunter leading a fight, 
and then you starting the fight. So if Annie walks into high ground, into their jungle, into your jungle, whatever, gives you vision, you guys then make the decision. Do we have enough information on the map and off what Bounty Hunter is giving us to kill? Yes or no? Probably yes, because Bounty Hunter is pretty decent at scouting. And this is a bracket where people just don't understand how they're going to win this game. They also don't draft like this, like 90% of games, I hope. And like, if you play with Bounty Hunter, you can inflate your net worth pretty quickly. Like, you'd easily be at like 9k net worth. If you play with Bounty Hunter more, because you guys would have like probably 50% more kills, let's say, between two of you. So you're instead of 12 kills, you're at 18 kills. And then he gets the bonus gold from track for like 300, 225, and then 300 total for you, the ally bonus. Yeah, you guys essentially get a 300 increase gold swing off of a singular kill at level 2 for track 12. Play with him, you get more gold. And then if you play with him more, as I said, he can see how he can help you make stuff happen. And then you're more farmed, and then you can actually make stuff happen. Like, you kind of walked around, not really contributing much. Like, every single fight that has happened has more or less been on their terms. They walk at you guys with their no initiation, and they kill you all. There's a Monkey King literally in front of your fountain with no Aegis. Is actually surviving. It's gonna bounce right both of you guys and probably survive. Alright, it doesn't survive. Right. Oh, also, I should come to why I want you to finish your boots. Boots are a very slot efficient item. The whole reason why they have so many upgrades is because base, uh, this flat movement speed increase sucks. It's like a really shit concept in this game. You're gonna hear like Void Spirit, you're very mobile as a hero. But, if you want armor, you go phase boots. If you want damage, you go phase boots or treads. If you want health, you go treads. If you want to move around the map quicker, you go you to travel, tranks, or phase boots. You move around the map a lot. You are the playmaker. These make you move 40 or uh, 20%? Yeah, 20% quicker. It's 45 base boots. You 20% quicker on melee heroes. You go a lot quicker with your phase boots active. You move around the map quicker. You buy phase boots and win lights if you want to maneuver around the map super, super quickly. You just make plays happen. With this build, you really just like. You recognize that you need to make plays probably off of your draft and with the Yule Scepter. Then you kind of just walk around like you're like you have this mindset of I'm a hard carry like not really like you're Sven although this guy's hypothetically although your Sven is your offlaner he should be like your hard carry type hero. Do you guys see the claymore that goes into the heart of Tarask? I don't. Maybe he wasn't sure what builds into heart, so he bought the recipe so he could read. That makes sense. Oscar's really smart, actually. Uh, yeah, I think it's over. Yeah, gotta make plays in the map if you're the playmaker, even on a hard carry. Like, uh, I'm the only person on my team where I'm playing with an Ember Spirit hard carry who can make plays happen. I have to do it. Just bite the bullet, drop your net worth and stuff. You don't really do because you have a bounty hunter with agonists. Really exciting stuff. For the bounty hunter, they'll keep your net worth up. He will give you an extra, like, let's call it a flat 50. An extra 50 gold per kill. That's way really wrong. You call it 50, and you're going to accept that. So, yeah, he gives you extra gold, so you can justify not fighting or farming as much because you can fight more. And then you do that, and you're happy. Because you're uh, making kills happen. If you're making kills happen, you're pushing the map. Which means they're not getting as much gold because the map is closing out on them. And they're dead, so they can't farm. You get the more room. You're happy. Because you're winning games instead of losing to like a 2,000 kill monkey king. Alright, one of the last two replays for the night. Becky on Clinks. I rarely played ever against Blue Mother and it feels like you don't have a... Oh, that's just so depressing to read. I rarely, if ever, played against Broodmother. 
it, it feels like if you don't have a huge amount of spider clear, you cannot even show face in lane. Even as a clink, she bought dust so many times early. My thought was I should leave mid lane for other lanes and try to get things done elsewhere, but she kept pushing down towers. What's the correct play against Broodmother when you have no way to lane? Yeah, welcome to Dota, where it's Broodmother. Wait. Oh, there's Broodmother. I got really confused with the fucking skin. But yeah, welcome to Dota, where uh, you just lose. You have literally zero Broodmother counters. I don't even need to watch this game to explain, like, how, tell you guys why you guys lost. Direct no Broodmother counters. They 10 picked the Broodmother. Yeah, I knew that that was coming. Yeah, like, uh. You gotta be super, super careful of that. <laughs> There's really nothing much I can say about this game. If the enemy team knows that you have very, very limited AoE, and no AoE because power shot scales or decreases based on number of units hit, so it essentially doesn't kill spiders because by the time it hits all the spiders, it does like less than 100 damage. Not before reductions as well. Like it's gonna do no damage. So yeah, so Broodmother is going to run, run around the map and uh, kill everything while AM free farms. He somehow only had 430 GPM. But like, in an actual game, you guys probably lose this game like off draft. Like, it's justifiable to call it off GG. I see you win, but like, th this is the kind of game where you just lose off of a draft. and There's nothing you can do about that. The only thing I can suggest is you have time to pick, you need to realize, oh fuck, what is, like, what is their pick going to be? You saw the AM, and you were like, yo, Clinks can hunt anti-mage, and Clinks can kill anti-mage, because he has physical damage and can buy a hex and work and shit. Cool. Good at good doing that. What can they pick to beat your team? What is their Clinks type hero? It's a free Meeple game. A shit Huskar game. Shit Visage game. Really free Broodmother game. Look, the four main shields heroes I suggested. There's four, right? Rude. Message. Yeah, four. Out of the four main heroes I suggested, or listed, that are primary cheese heroes, two of them are very weak against the AoE, where the two heroes beat lack of AoE disables and stuff, which your team doesn't have much of. But Meepo is slightly worse, because he can potentially die in Chronosphere if he gets focus fired down. Free mother can't. Because you're just never gonna chrono her. Because she's just gonna kill you with spiders. Win her lane and be like 10,000 net worth above every hero in the game. Because you can't kill a broodmother. So, you, you have to realize that. Like, my pick probably would have been Kunkka. Kunkka has a s similar functions as a uh, Link. Now, I can hunt anti mage. And I can kill Weaver. And I can kill Venge and Viper. Or Venno. Not Viper. Because I have X mark. If I X mark him, I have two AB disabled, so he can't counterspell off of those. And you can't purge counterspell, the magic community. But you can't purge it at all, it just doesn't pierce magic community. You can pull back where the active. Anyways, uh, yeah, my pick would have been Kunkka. At least that way I can. I'm going to assume if my lane is that terrible, I swap the Winter Ranger to the, the mid lane, I go off lane Kunkka. You picking Clinks here, you have that same. Uh, idea that you can swap lanes with the uh, with the Winter Ranger, but it's far less likely that the hero that you beat or that you lose to will lose to Winter Ranger because they're both similar style heroes. They're high range, very squishy heroes that depend a lot on burst attack speed and don't want to be gap closed on. If you're gap closed on and they have disables or they have the right form of damage to kill you or the right heroes to kill you, the game is over. Because you're don't, both those heroes are very uh. Dependent on laning. Like, Winter Ranger can't really recover and Clinks can't recover. Well, I'm, I see you win, obviously. But like, in this game, this should have been a loss. 100%. So before we even start the replay review, or this replay, you gotta think about the draft. Like, it's not on you. Did you play played against Broodmother? Like, as someone who's never played against Broodmother and you winning, very good job. But, uh, now that you've seen it and felt the wrath of Broodmother, you need to keep her in mind at all times. The only time you don't need to is when she's not meta. Or not not even not meta, because she's not meta at all right now. But she's viable. And if a cheese pick is viable, you have to consider it in every draft. Like, right now Visage is pretty much dog tier. 
I'm never going to go into a game thing. Make sure we have Visage counter, guys. Make sure we have Visage counters. Who the fuck cares? They can pick Visage if they want. It's a free Visage game. But it's a free game for me because they have a fucking Visage. This just sucks. So, yeah, like... I think this game, I go offlane and Winter Ranger goes mid. Because although she uh, loses to Broodmother, she at least has some countermeasure in her win run. She's gonna, she's gonna get run down, but she has some way of surviving like four or five seconds longer to see the movement speed, the slow, and the evasion. You don't. You have none of that. Also, the fact that you're here, we can just go against Clinks or uh, Anti Mage and just beat the shit out of them. You get a Blightstone or something like that early and just whack them. Yeah, like, uh. We're gonna watch this. But yeah, like. My uh, suggestion is every single time she gets a spider army, you leave lane. Give up your tier 1 and tier 2. Like, even right now, I'd be like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be so awful to watch. <laughs> yeah, I knew your, your lane's already over. She has way too many spiders. You're gonna die, like, level 4 once she gets enough regen. She's gonna start running her spiders at you. I may be wrong a lot, but yeah, classic Broodmother, there's nothing you can do about this. All I can say is, pick a better hero against Broodmother, like, you gotta, you gotta anticipate the cheese picks, although it's very unlikely to, to get cheese picked. When it happens, it fucking bites. And when it bites, it bites hard. You actually kill Brood here? Oh my lord, you don't look okay, good. Wait a sec, did I see that right? You know what? Yeah, uh. Oh, nice. That's actually worse for you, though. So, although Bounty Hunter got that kill, that means Brood is coming back with full health, full mana, and like 30 seconds quicker. It's actually worse for that Bounty Hunter killed him there. That's really unfortunate. Yeah, put Winter Ranger mid. That's tip number one after you get brooded like this. She loses the least hard out of all of you guys. That is important. If you have no hero that beats them, you either have to accept the Brumother... Like you have to accept it anyways, that Brumother is going to be massive. Brumother is going to be the biggest problem in this game. You have to kill her in Kronos for the Focus Fire and all your ultimates and shit. Here's a smurf... Ch uh, yeah, you're checking if the smurf, 100% right there. You're not happy about this one. <laughs> this is actually so sad. And here comes your next death, because they're going to have a cart wave. Oh, Bruno is a sissy. She should be diving you right here. If she dives right here, your tower falls. <laughs> okay. Uh, this, yeah, the cart's still alive. Although she's going to not protect it. Yeah, she fucked up. That tier 1 tower is dead there if she protected it. Yeah. I'm just going to fast forward. You're on 3 right now. I'm going to go like 10 minutes. Was actually quite calm. You're four and three. You came back hard. What, what did you do? Gank anti mage? Yeah, I appear so. Yeah. Did you two tower dead yet? Yeah. Yeah. Only a play you can do is because Winter and your Void have some kill threat. He's going to keep Chronosphere her. Every time it's off cooldown, is go Hunter and Chronosphere her. Whenever she shows in front of your tier three, you TP both these heroes back, or you and Void back, and then kill him. You guys uh, cannot let her freely hit tier threes. But you cannot do anything to directly pressure her from free farming your jungle. Which a good broodmother will farm your jungle. And again, nothing you can do about it. Nice. That's fine, that's totally worth it. I don't know how that happened, but I guess you guys five main gank the broodmothers in front of your tier three. She should be bottom lane right now, hitting your tier 1, tier 2, or going top lane, hitting your tier 1, tier 2. Or having your team play with her, or she gets Roshan. Yeah. 39 last hits. This is a rough one. Yeah, your hero just has no way of farming. Which is why your hero is super lane dependent.
Okay, there's hope. This really actually just sucks. We're gonna talk about a lot more of what you can do against uh, Brother Early for anybody out there to get bothered. Except your lane is over. The worst thing you can do is TP back into your lane and die again. If you have the spider army, go gank. Go farm jungle. Go creep skip. Anything you can. I mean my creep skipping, I plan on talking a bit more about it at some point. Is that uh, you walk back here? You aggro these creeps and you walk into this hard camp here, where you just kill them over here, whatever. Like if you're a Kunkka or an Ember Spear, like some AoE hero, you can kill them here if you want. Here. Or you can walk them into this hard camp over here. Or walk them up here into this medium camp, or I mean hard camp here or the medium camp here. And just farm that. That way Brimler can't pressure you. Although she's going to free farm this area down here, and she, they may rotate onto you, and they may rotate supports to kill you. That is still, you're gonna die no matter what, who the fuck cares. But, they rotated Shitomancer and Shitful Spirit. You think these two heroes have any sort of gank threat onto you? Unless they, like, gale you from the tree line or, like, something like that? Like, gale you from the fog? Probably not. And they have to commit both supports, because they have one stun on their entire team besides mana, which is 1.1 seconds or something. Yeah, 1.1 seconds. Oh, no, it's 0.3, it's damage one. No. Uh, isn't it higher with Aghanims? 1.3 with Aghanims. Anyways, yeah, they have to commit both supports to kill you, because one with the other just doesn't do anything to you. If that happens, your side lanes win. Which is the most important thing for you, because mid lane is fucking lost. Who cares that you die? But if you can force both supports, even like in a different game where there's not shit a and shitful spirit, if you force their supports, you constantly run over here, and you run them up here, and you run them over here, and you die up here. That's like 30 seconds where their offlane and their safe lane are solo. If you can die in 30 seconds, they can die in 30 seconds. I can promise you that much. And they will. And they have decent team. And thing is, it doesn't matter. You're not, you're not trusting in your team putting belief into random strangers. Logically speaking, the people in your bracket will know, any bracket will know how to win a 2v1 where there is not a level difference. The biggest issue people have in 2v1 scenarios in lower bracket games is when it starts off on a 2v1 and they don't cap them off early. They don't abuse the fact that they're level 1 early and the uh, solo laners out level them because they don't have to lane properly. In a 1v2, where the 1 is the same level as the 2, and the 2 has more spells, they will get aggressive and they will kill. That is not even a question, that's a fact. We can run, we can run a test like 100 times and at least 65% of the times, I'm making up that number, 65% of the time, they will win that lane. And you're increasing the odds of your team winning a lane from, let's say, 50-50, they win there, they don't, to 65. They're going to take that, right? They go back lane, go gank. If your hero can gank, you have invis, your hero's kind of shit for ganking. You don't really have any hero that you can gank with, but you can kind of go to the enemy safe lane, pressure the anti-mage a bit more. Or if you're like a... Uh... A monkey king or something like that. Although monkey king beats through mother. You uh, let, let, let's say you're here with wave clear. A pangolier. Who oh, you just go when you hit nukes. Because although you're losing your lane, best you can do, right? Like this game is super super good. Like I mean, obviously fucking sucks. Not a good game at all. You got blue mothered. But it's good in the sense that. You're going to learn more from this one game than you probably will from any other game that you play the next like week. Because this just shows how important drafting is in Dota. The guy I play with, one of my friends, he asked me what the biggest difference between a like High Crusader low Archon to a High Archon low Legend is. And I said understanding of draft. I don't know enough about that bracket. Like pinpoint what exactly the biggest problem is. But I know for a fact from playing with friends who are high Archon, low Legend, to high Crusaders and low Ar uh, Archon, that the high Archon's low Legend way better understanding of drafts. Even if they're drafting their playstyle is shit, they have a better understanding. They know for a fact why a Boomer 10 pick here is good. I don't know what rank Frank and Castle is. Crusader 5. Hasn't he been in one of these too? I think he has. Yeah, so like, even if they aren't super high rank, they understand that Bruno is a free Bruno in their game. And even though he lost, he still 
kind of did okay. I mean, he's really under farm for what he should be. He should be like 11 K net worth, 12 K net worth. Like 200 lasts by this point. You won your lane super hard, you got two towers. You have your entire jungle. Now much reason for you not to have won the game by now. So, good mother. Like, understanding of how you win off of draft is the biggest difference. After every game, ask yourself, was there a better pick? Like, when you picked, was there a better pick? If you're a support player, probably not. You first pick your supports. I do that. You probably do that if you're a support player. Record player. Your 10th pick. Consider the possibilities. I know that uh, 10th pick, I don't know what the time is because I don't care about 10th pick. The last phase pick. But like, I think it's like 13 seconds, something like that, that you have. You have 13 seconds as well as every single previous pick to address your team's weaknesses. Kunkka gives you team fight. Calm the chronosphere. Gives you catch. Gives you AoE. Gives you a boom other counter. That's something for you, at least. I didn't know that they're gonna pick Boom Mother. Like, I, if I saw your job, I would have known they picked Boom Mother. Like, if I was you, I wouldn't have thought about Boom Mother. But it still solves some of the issues you guys have. You have no AOE damage and no way AOE disable apart from your uh, Chrono Sphere and Shackle Shot, which is unreliable. You don't want unreliable stuns. Like, there, I guess. But, like, address that. Pick Gunka. Or picks the Void Spirit, pick Ember Spirit. That's AoE disable with catch. Or not AoE disable, but AoE heroes with catch and a, a magic damage build instead of a physical build. So, like, you're hybriding off of the, uh, not hybriding, you're splitting off of your team's primary source of damage. Wind Ranger is physical, but this is magic damage, but, like, primarily primarily magical, unless you go the MKB Milner build, but it's magic. This guy is mostly magic, I mean physical, but like this is magic, it's magic. But a lot of physical builds for uh, damage from Void. We may as well add in like that mix where you go like Ember Spirit, who's also partially magical, partially physical. Void Spirit, who's partially magical, partially physical. Funka, yeah, partially magical, partially physical. And you force them into armor items and spell immunity, as well as uh, pipes and stuff. If you force them into items like that, you're a lot happier. Team buying a Crimson and a Pipe, doesn't want to. They want one. They don't want both. But if you force them to buying both, you're way better. <laughs> Let's be. Yeah, uh, I'm not even watching you. I was talking about that. Orchid is kind of okay here. I mean, AM really realistically at this point should have a uh, mint. Finish your boots. And, and you manage, yeah, and you can't even show in fights. Oh, the Chrono, the Chrono save! Void the animal! Oh my god, he's done it! No, he hasn't, never mind. This is so depressing, actually. There, you're all dead. Get him, Treadless Mage. Oh, they're right. Some people are dying. Nine heroes have died. I think I'll, I'll call it off to this replay. Just gotta... Gotta, like, consider things. Which is hard to do. Drafting is super fucking hard. And it's gonna happen to you a lot, and that's how you're gonna learn. Where you're gonna have, have some game-winning pick, and they're gonna pick an even better game-winning pick that shits on you. Like, Clinks to Broodmother. Yeah, and then against Brumother, you if you're a Clinks, you can't show up into a fight first. You have to wait till Brumother finds a target, and then you can show into the fight. If you were like a Dro and an Invoker, a uh, hmm, what else is Brood Dumpster? Yeah, I'll go with those heroes. Those are like the Arc Ward, and that's a cool one. If you like any of those heroes, and you show them before the fight starts. Invis is going to walk around the fight and it's got on top of you and you're dead. But if you're Invis and she jumps your back line, she jumps your your, your Wind Ranger, your Mick Majai, or your Bounty, then you show up on their half of the back line and Brumother's like, well, fuck. I want to kill Clinks. That guy's my target. But I'm already on Bounty Hunter and I've wasted spells with my ultimate in BKB. So then you force her into a situation. Do I disengage off of Bounty Hunter, waste my Insatiable Hunger, my BKB, 
and then try walking up the clinks, or do I just commit to the bounty hunter and clinks freely hits my te uh, team? You force her into a lose lose. Do you waste her BKB, some of her ultimate, and moves, or she sticks up bounty hunter and you just get a free fight? Like clinks is an example. That's the same principle as Dro with Invoker with uh, Arc Warden, any hero like that. Just gotta understand how to play fights. I can't show up into a fight until Blue Mother is dead or Blue Mother's away from me. Or she's chronoed. Or dead. Or she's not a Blue Mother because we picked a Kunkka and then she's not even a factor. Yeah. Understand it's draft. Super, super helpful. That's just one of the many games. You're gonna get 10th pick Meepo, 10th pick Blue Mother, 10th pick Visage, and you're gonna be like, man. But here's fucking disgusting. What do I do? You're gonna come to me and I'll tell you. Oh, right. Actually, that's the last replay of the night. I forgot. I messaged Rev, and Rev's uh, Mars replay is wrong. I how got the ID wrong. I'm going to assume they typed it out instead of copied it off of uh, Dota Buff or something like that. Yeah. I guess that's it. I will uh, be trying to do this again every Tuesday. I may move it to weekends, but for now it's Tuesday. Recently, I may move it to weekends. It's because I just started a new full-time job, and uh, a bit difficult to want to have the drive to do this. I've kind of lost interest in Dota over the past few weeks, and two, I like don't have a whole lot of time anymore to do this because I go to bed way earlier than I used to. I used to wake, or I used to go to bed some nights at 5 a.m. Now I'm waking up at 5 a.m. It's kind of rough, believe it or not. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna try at this. Still, I still enjoy doing it, and I hope that people here still enjoy me doing it. Even if you don't watch the full thing, you're just watching this part, because who cares? This your clergy's done. Yeah, uh, we'll see about this. Oh, I forgot to mention, I should have mentioned this earlier, in case I uh, can't get the, in case I can't find the video from last week where it cut out. Scars isn't with me anymore, or with DFZ. Long story short, I'm on my own. May get some person, or random people, or various people, or whoever to come help me do this. But for now, I'm solo. I'm gonna test some stuff out. I'm hoping that I can find the video file, because I couldn't earlier, but I hope I can stitch the two of them together. But no guarantee. Yeah, as of right now, going solo. There's also a reason why my motivation has been. Not as high because I don't have scars to push me every Tuesday to be like, yo, replay review, replay review. But he was the one that did that. But yeah, uh, that's it. If you got any questions, feel free to DM me. I'm gonna assume you all know my Discord because kind of watching it through Discord. But if not, I'm Journey. And uh, yeah, I will probably talk to you guys next Tuesday. Yeah, everybody.